I've been meaning to come and do a video, a follow-up on the boy in the box since the police made the announcement last week about the discovery of his identity and his family. And I've just kind of been putting it off because I've been letting more information come in. I've been, you know, was kind of hoping that the police would come back and give an update on their thoughts on what led this child to be in that box in the woods and who they believe is the responsible person. There have been so, so much information the first night alone that the announcement came. I just... I was going to make a video that night, and there was just so much on Twitter, and TikTok, and Reddit, and YouTube, and Facebook. I just couldn't weed through it all, you know. So many different theories. I had this one thought. The police said that when the little boy's remains were, you know, found, that a lot of people came to view this child to see if they thought they might know him, or you know, ID him, or if they thought maybe it was a child that they had missing in their life. What if one of those people that came by there and viewed the child, knew the child, and just kept quiet because they just wanted to make sure, you know? Maybe they walked by and they looked and they said, yes, that's him, that's our grandson, that's our son, that's our you know, little boy that lived in our family. Because why didn't nobody ever come out and say, whatever happened to, you know, this little boy in the family? This, once again, and I know a lot of people have already debunked this thought, and the police did not touch on this, that I can remember in the press conference, I don't remember anybody asking about this or... Um, them mentioning this, uh, this story that this woman told many years later, this Martha, that her mother had purchased a little boy who was about two, two and a half years of age, and that he had lived with their family for around two years or so, and then the mother had abused the child, both parents had abused the child the entire time they had him, from her thought, from her theory. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. She she accused her parents of having abused her. Someone on YouTube or Facebook rather said this theory was debunked because she was a mental patient. No, she was not a mental patient. The police themselves said, and if you go to Reddit and read the story, she was never institutionalized or hospitalized for mental illness. She was not a mental patient. And if she was a victim of child sexual abuse and trauma, and she was living with this thing, you know, having taken place in her life, <coughs> she probably did need um, counseling and help. But she was not a mental patient, not in the way that the person on YouTube or Facebook tried to make it sound like she was just this mental person who went around making up stories. No. Uh, I found her and her family's photographs on a website. Um, there was a story linked, but when you clicked on the story and it took you to read it, it had been removed. But there are photographs of her and her family, her and her parents, and her parents in their uh, photographs of their occupations. Now, I don't know whether any of her story or any of that is related, and... If it is, maybe the police will come out and say that. But I just had that thought about the reason why nobody ever came out and said, 
Whatever happened to little Joseph Sorelli, you know, the little boy? The way that the police talked about it was he had siblings on both sides of his family. So that tells everybody that the parents had two separate families. The father had his family and the mother had her family. Now, 1953, it was still somewhat taboo for an unwed mother. Was it possible that they were not married? And because the police touched on something, a question from the audience or from the the reporters asked, asking questions, and he said something like the birth the name on the birth certificate wasn't exact. It wouldn't have been exactly the same or something to that effect and that told me well maybe the parents were not married the father's name was put on the birth certificate but the mother's name was a different name now was the little boy given the last name of the father or the mother um, later on each of them whether they were married or not married, later on, after this child's birth, they both went on to have more children. The father was married. Everybody kind of had a, you know, had his name and his wife's name, and they had figured that out within the first ten minutes of this press conference, probably faster than that. It's possible that if this young mother of this little boy if they were not married, or even if they were married and then divorced after the child's birth, she may not have had the financial support to raise the child. She may have, the child may have been taken from her by the state, but would that not have been on record? I mean, I know that they said that during the search for the identity of this child that they checked, uh, adoption records, foster care records, they, they checked, you know, um, hospital records and stuff like that. I read one story that someone posted that said that the Philadelphia police and those in authority knew this child's identity years ago. And the reason that they never came out with it was, was because they had to wait for the DNA to prove it. Hospital records. Now, we all heard the, the woman um, at the press conference say that the child had had surgery, that he had had a intravenous line. We all remember the story that he had surgical scars. There was one scar mentioned in the story that I shared on my YouTube page, or video that I made, about him having possibly had a cut-down line on his ankle. Um, these are often given to babies when it's hard for a nurse to start an IV. They will do a cut-down on the ankle and go into um, a vein and put in a... Um, IV line. So I think that had this happened in the, according to the police, this family was from right there in Philadelphia. This didn't take place in Utah or California or someplace. So the, the hospital records were probably pretty easy to dig up and say, okay. On this date, this doctor performed this surgery or this, you know, had to put a IV line in this child, and this is the child's name. So those records, if the police were searching for those records years over the years, it's more than likely that they were able to narrow down who would have had that type of surgery or IV at, at which hospital, by which doctor, and, you know, so like that person said, 
they they had an idea of who the child was for a very long time. This is this is their theory, and I kind of agree with it. I don't think that to the Philadelphia police and the investigators that this was a hundred percent mystery, as it was to the rest of the public. I think that they have probably interviewed people. Um, they've nar narrowed the child down, and like. Like I said, and like the police said in that interview, in the press conference, the birth certificate, the name on the birth certificate may not have been the same. He may have had his mother's name instead of his father's name. So maybe they had to just narrow it down as to who he was. They said that they did birth records from this mother and that she had had three births during the time that they were, you know, the window that they narrowed down his age. I would say that they had checked birth records probably going back as late as 1950, probably through 1955 maybe, because they had guessed the child's age to be between three and seven and it turned out that he was had just turned four so I think that they probably had information that they were sitting on for a long time and they were just waiting for that DNA to absolutely you know take away any doubt and did they not come up with these names and things in the time that these people were still alive these parents because both parents are deceased you have living siblings who claim to not have known anything about this but then other theories are is that maybe they were you know maybe his name was thrown around when they were kids maybe there was this I don't know, it would be really, really hard for me to understand how a mother or even a father could have a little child like that. And nobody, no aunt or uncle or grandparent or anyone ever mentions that he exists, whatever happened to him. Um, this leads me back once again to the theory that they gave, the mother gave the child up whether it was willingly or because she could not afford to take care of him and was getting no support from the father or maybe but they both agreed to give the child away and go their separate ways and get on with their own lives or maybe the child was put into foster care and ended up at this foster home you know I don't know if any of these are connected in any way or if this child lived with his biological mother until his death and if she or maybe a new husband or boyfriend was responsible or even a grandfather or even her. I hope that the Philadelphia police don't sit on this <laughs> for years and years. I hope that they come out with their idea. I think they already kind of have an idea. Maybe somebody even told them what they had heard, you know, in the family. Maybe they did know about his existence and they were all just told to not talk about it. I don't know. But somebody out there did know for a long time. And if it turns out that the story that this Martha woman told was true, they could have solved this 20 plus years ago. Um, if they would not have, well, maybe they couldn't have solved it, but they could have had an idea if they had not dismissed her and, and called her a mental patient because she was seeing a psychiatrist and had been treated for probably ch childhood traumas and things like that. But mental illness can be anything from Just, you know, dealing with trauma, dealing with unresolved abuse, dealing with depression, anxiety, bipolar. 
Um, it's all something that happens in our brains, in our our brain, but also in our um, souls, in our, you know, who we are. It needs to be taken more seriously when someone comes forward and says, this is something that took place in my life when I was a child. And if they hadn't looked at her as this mental patient, as this guy on Facebook said, and they had looked at her as someone who had a story to tell that could have been very true. But then again, that leads me back to my theory that they knew this was true and they didn't want other people to know about it because of who these these two people were, who they were friends with, who they... And keep this in mind as well. Pedophiles, if this were true, if this woman was telling the truth about her parents and the circle of friends that they had, they connect themselves to people in positions of authority. Serial killers, pedophiles, anyone who wants to kind of take attention off of themselves, they will connect themselves to people in high positions. They will connect themselves. They will put themselves in everybody's good graces because they want to come across looking like a great guy, a great woman, whatever. Um, they, they could never have done anything like this. They were such great people. They want to hobnob and rub elbows with those in authority and those in high positions because then nobody would dare to believe that someone like that would be friends with someone who was an abuser. And those people in those positions, they don't want their names smeared. They don't want people to say, well, you know, this mayor or this senator or this um, whatever else, you know, this police commissioner or whatever else it might have been was hanging out with this family, you know. Hanging out with this pedophile, this child abuser. It's very possible that this story was known to be true and that they just said, you know what, we don't have any proof of it and we don't want to rub, you know, we don't want to run these, these other people's names through the mud and get them talked about unnecessarily. That's just another theory. Hopefully the police will come on out, tell us the truth about this case so everybody can put these theories to bed and we can once once and for all know who they believe killed the child. Was it was it this story Martha told? Was was it the grandfather, the father, the uncle, the boyfriend, the mother? You know? Somebody knows. Um sixty five years have passed and these people are more than likely all deceased. Was that what the police were waiting for all this time? You know, 20 years ago when this Martha woman came out and said, my mother is the one that killed this child because she became angry because he threw up his baked beans. And, of course, they did find baked beans undigested in his stomach and he had vomit in his esophagus. And he had been beaten. This woman's story lined right up. And unless she had an insider in the police department or an insider in the medical examiner's office, how would she have known that? You know, I, I may be wrong and I may be proven wrong and I may have to come back and make another video and say I was completely off and this woman lied like a dog. But I would be very, very shocked if it turned out not to be related. But will the police share that with us? You know, will they say the child was adopted and he was beaten to death by his adopted mother? Or will they say, you know, we can't be sure who killed the child, you know? They need to tell us something. People are just, I think people deserve to know so that once and for all, all the rumors and theories can be put to 
rest and the families of this little boy, the brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, who claimed they never knew of him. Um, maybe they didn't know, but maybe they had heard that they had an older brother somewhere out there. Um, they can put this to rest once and for all. They can say, okay, here's the truth. You know?